Team Stapleton. You, darling. To I loved you. him before he was famous. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and listen, I bring greetings from two people mm -hmm. Monica Calhoun mm -hmm. and somebody named Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> know them both. No. Yeah. Let's talk about Whoopi. I know people must, or at least initially, must have said to you, You and Whoopi? Yes, many. <laughs> In the press. Really? Yeah, they always ask that. Which is strange to us, because we're people, and we're actors, you know, mm -hmm. and, and we're theater-oriented and experienced, and we're both serious oh. actors. And, and of course, it uh, was a joy to meet her. And I hadn't met her before I uh, started work, mm -hmm. you see, on Baghdad Cafe. And uh, she's an absolute joy to be with. And she's one of the finest people I've ever known, the most honest and uh, generous and straightforward and, of course, infinite gifts. Um, unique person, don't you think? Well, when you were into the honest, the straightforward, mm. I give you a double amen on that. Oh, well, Whoop, you don't know me well. I'm she... mean and awful. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopi tells it like it is. Oh. <laughs> she definitely tells it like it is. Um, how did the network decide to put you two together, and how did they get both of you together? Well, this? because they uh, saw, a f well, uh, Mort Lachman saw a film uh, that we had seen too, called Baghdad Cafe, mm -hmm. and it had a part for Whoopi and a part for me. So we came after us, they all did. <laughs> and it was such a lovely idea, and we both responded to it, and uh, responded to the fact that uh, we were also going to be in it, as each was told. <laughs> oh, they, they told you? Yeah, they told me Whoopi was going to be in it, and they told Whoopi I was going to be in it, and that was a big inducement to me, and she says it was to her, as well as the quality of the piece. Mm -hmm. So they kind of lied a little bit to get both of you. They didn't lie. Well, I mean... No, no, they didn't I, have it a was true. Really? They had a uh, commitment from you? Um, well, I guess not at the time. I guess they told Whoopi, but they may have phrased it correctly and said they were asking Gene. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now, if someone was from another planet and they knew nothing about Baghdad Cafe, explain the premise. Well, it's the story of this uh, isolated cafe in uh, the desert, in the uh, Mojave Desert, and uh, a woman named Brenda with... Um, a uh, sometime husband who is played by Cleavon Little, mm -hmm. and uh, a family uh, played a daughter played by Monica Calhoun, and uh, and other uh, uh, characters, and uh, in comes this woman who has just uh, left her marriage in the desert. She just stormed out of the car. She wouldn't take it anymore. And she walks for miles into this cafe, doesn't know where she's going. And so it's a new beginning for this woman. Now, in the movie, she was a German woman, German tourist, but if they didn't want a German tourist. They wanted an American tourist. And, and so I come to this cafe, and there's something about it that is, feels like home, and the magic and the mystery of the desert appeals to her and the sense that she's starting a new chapter in her life. And uh, this uh, brand is very interesting. And uh, that's, yeah. so it's the blossoming, I think uh, you might say, of the desert, and, uh, in uh, metaphorically, of a friendship. Yeah. Okay, let's take a, a commercial. I don't want to get caught up in another okay. idea. We'll take a commercial and come right back with Gene Stacy. <laughs> What idea was it for you and Carol to sing the theme in All in the Family? Well, that was written by uh, Charles Strauss, the composer. I don't know. I guess it was born in the minds of the great ones like Norman Lear. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, great, wasn't it? We made yeah. three. 
uh, three tapes, you know, through the years. And uh, we always tried to articulate that one line that nobody in this whole country could understand. And we got many requests, you know. And it was, to any who cares to know at this late date, boy, the way our old La Salle ran great. Now, that was a, a, an automobile mm -hmm. of yesteryear. <laughs> yeah. yeah, see, um, I knew that you could sing, and I'm glad they made that decision. Sandy, show this thing I found this morning. What did you find? Put your glasses on. Oh, all you really need is heart. When the odds are saying you'll never win, that's when a grin should start. It's the youth of America, Joe. When your luck is batting zero, <laughs> get your chin up off the floor. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> yeah. I knew then they had to get you to sing that theme. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you know, anything for a laugh. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we, like I said, we fell in love with you on All in the Family, but what kind of things did you do before then? Because you're a veteran. Oh, You'd well, I did that and yeah. stole, stole the nasality of that character <laughs> mm -hmm. for a family. But, uh, well, you know, uh, shows on Broadway. Uh, actually, Damn Yankees was my first musical, and I say modestly, but it won't sound modest, that I was a discovery of George Abbott's. And uh, before that, I'd done um, uh, my first Broadway show, which was called In the Summer House with Judith Anderson and Mildred Dunnick. But uh, I was going along nicely and uh, actually did more musicals than uh, straight plays on Broadway. Yeah. Did you, did you ever, like, work at a Baskin and Robbins, or were you ever, like, oh. somebody's secretary or something? Oh, out of show oh yeah, I wasn't at Baskin's, or I would have, you know, <laughs> <laughs> taken the stuff home. Uh, I, I, yeah, I was a secretary. Oh. I, was a, I was a native of New York City, which was the best place to be if you wanted to be in the theater at that time. And uh, I had to earn a living as soon as I graduated from high school. I started out as a typist. But then every summer, I left whatever job I had and went to uh, summer stock. And I had wonderful years of experience. And I worked, though, for quite a number of years. Became a secretary after I learned shorthand. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did that. And I, I, then I worked in workshops, we called them. The off-Broadway move, movement didn't exist then. We had workshop classes, things like that, at night, and you just build, you know, uh, there are many links in the chain. Yeah. Mm. After All in the Family, was it hard to find jobs and people that wanted to put you in situations that weren't like Edith Bunker? No, not at all, which I uh, attribute to the intelligence of the casting community. Mm -hmm. No, I wasn't uh, plied with anything like that. One or two times, you know, but... No, and these most wonderful opportunities uh, in television and theater came after that series, thanks to that series. Yeah, yeah that, that series broke a lot of ground as far as television it shows did. are concerned. It did, yes, and uh, I don't know, is there anything breaking ground now like that did? I don't know, you have um, to answer that. I'm your interviewer now. <laughs> yeah, well, I like to have conversations. I don't like, there's enough yeah. interviews going on. Yeah. You know, I like to have yeah. conversations. I, I think there's some groundbreaking yes, things. Some ground a lot of people may not like the ground that's being broken, oh. but I think Fox as a <laughs> network is kind of breaking a lot of ground. I think so, too, yeah. You know, yeah. There were a lot of controversial things that went on on the show. What, was the, what got the most letters? What did people have a hard time dealing with on All in the Family? Gee, you're talking about ancient history. I, I don't want to take up the time uh, trying to remember. Yeah. But, you know, uh, actually, the shock did not come that was expected. CBS manned the, the switchboards mm -hmm. after our opening uh, and expected tons of calls. They only got 500 calls, which was very, very little. Yeah. And you see it, Norman Lear trusted the audience. Mm -hmm. And he was right. He trusted them. He uh, 
he uh, uh, didn't think of them as the lowest common denominator to play to. Yeah. And uh, therefore, he expressed his social conscience, his wonderful, entertaining uh, talent, uh, and um, wasn't afraid, you know? Yeah. So it was groundbreaking, but people were ready for it. I guess so, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, good luck with Baghdad Cafe. Oh, thank you. It opens uh, this Friday. The 28th of September, I get that in. Yeah, so. we, we gotta do business too while <laughs> Yeah, we're let's here. do that. 28th at 8.30, and we have a lovely lead in of uh, Burt Reynolds' new show too. Yeah, that and mm. that has everybody on it. It certainly does the best. Yeah. It, you know, it's interesting that you, you, when you made the statement, you said it opens. You still have theater yeah. in your heart. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yes. Well, that's the mother of it all, you know. Yeah, her television show opens. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Yeah.